Welcome back to the channel. My name's Andrew. It's good to see you. Today's video is uh, something I haven't done in like almost a year. Just a live fly on the wall view of a lesson I had with my coach Dan Carraher. Last Friday, Dan and I got to work as we're preparing for tournament golf, which is about to ramp up for me in about three weeks. Typically, I would see Dan like a week or two before the tournament. That sometimes worked well, sometimes didn't work so well because I would be still thinking about technique come tournament time. So I made a point of seeing him probably about three weeks before tournament time so I can really focus on the technique and what we learned in the lesson, in the session for about a week or so and then just implement it into playing. So that's what this video is. This is about 15 minutes of our lesson, flying the wall. You get to hear all of his wisdom and just see us work through some, some small tweaks. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learn something from it and uh, I'm really pumped to get back into tournament golf. So enjoy this lesson. Mm -hmm. tight with your arms and then wedges are just going to go high and all over the place. Same thing with driver, like when I'm relaxed and, and trusting myself I can really shape it, hit it low, high, cut it, but when I'm not, I'm rushed, arms get quicker and I just kind of get stuck and hit these high ones. I have noticed the other day, like when I was in here one day I've been using this thing because I noticed like my head started moving quite a bit at back. So I've been doing like rehearsals, just like lifting this leg to kind of keep me on top of it and turn a bit more. It has it felt pretty, because then it's almost like it lets me then, you know how, what Julian's doing right now where he's really trying to... That's actually what you need to do better at? Yeah. So the, what happens is, I don't mind if the left leg kicks in a little bit. But it's back towards kicking out a lot. The problem is the knee has to get in front of the hip on the downswing. Yeah. So the problem is, like, if you're really good at getting that to clear, yeah. then you can get away with it kicking in a little bit. But, but if you go here and then start sliding your hip forward, yeah. your knee's actually now pointed the wrong direction. Yeah. So you're cutting off your flexibility. And so, like, this entire leg is rotated internally, and then you're trying to turn it's almost more internally. Like, you're shutting off your flexibility range. Well, so then what, when we first met that was then you start to stand up just a little bit and the right side works out to so then when you start getting to where the right side comes yeah. out to try to make up for that extra turn and then you early extend a little bit yeah. and then you don't get as much shaft and that's where the ball starts going really high. Well and I even notice sometimes like when I take a video at a dress, this knee seems like it's already bent for more in, like more And like I said, like that's not death. But as you come down, it's the hip going, it's while this is there, yeah. that this goes there, that it actually deepens it, it actually almost rotates well, the leg. where those shanks came from, they come yeah. from with plane mate, because it's everything it's, going this way. So then the knee's actually pointed still behind the golf ball. Yeah. And so the only way you can get from there to rotate is that leg starts to straighten. Yeah. And the problem is then the left hip rises. The left hip rising is basically going to trigger the release, yeah. and then you start dumping yeah. the club and then it's gonna pass right. So that's the overdraw that comes out of nowhere, that like you hit a good, 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 and yeah. then you miss one way left. Yeah. Um, so then you start to get gun shy and start to like, kind of hold everything off to try and not hit that shot. Mm -hmm. Pretty much gonna stay there. So like it doesn't really clear much yeah. until late. Then you can start to see the divot. Yeah. But the problem is the right side's working out that entire time. Yeah. So what we need to do is get the left side to clear before the right side works out. So the transition, it's actually getting this left side to open up, right side stays back. So it's actually like your left knee is getting as far away from your right hip as possible. And then yeah. once once that left hip clears and left leg kind of rotate, once that knee gets in front of your hip, so this gets here, then the right side can start to fire. But if it gets there too early, everything needs a counter. So if the right side's going out without the left side going back, you're moving closer to the ball. Yeah, and that's what Shane So comes from the, um, what we yeah. want, if anything, is to go create more space. So if anything, we want this to clear and get back before this one, and I'd rather wait too long to where you actually, guys like Hogan, yeah. a lot of great players, would actually go through, get their hips yeah. deeper than they were at setup, yeah. is that's this left side clearing, 
lot more and earlier than the right side's working out. And so if you ever watch them, their right knee and hip never really get past kind of the arch ball of their foot. Like it stays yeah. very inside of their foot. Um, or you see the opposite, the guy's getting up on the toe and the knee starts getting out past the toes. And then you don't have any space. So that's yeah. where the shank can come from. Like the heel shots, the and that's the flip. Like all of it, you try to swing kind of around your right leg. Like so it's in the way. It's more of that here. Yep. Was it hitting more shots with like the bands help again? Bands helps a lot. Yeah. Is that and the goal is to get it to stretch as much as you can in transition. Yeah. And then what happens is just because the band's trying to make you do it wrong, it's trying to prevent that leg from rotating. Yeah. So like you can use the one that the hardest one that's the easiest to kind of see. Yeah. Is the like physio ball, like one of the big exercise balls. Yeah. Have it up against your tailbone and touching the wall. And what'll happen is if this side doesn't rotate, so that knee doesn't get in front of the hip, and this hip doesn't get back before this starts to work out, the ball will drop every single time. Yeah. And it only has to move like an eighth of an inch, yeah. and it's gone. And you can actually usually start to feel it drop before it actually drops, yeah. so it's really acute awareness of what's happening. Whereas if you do this correctly, you actually squeeze the ball into the wall. So the reason why I like the ball is you can hit deeper. You can push the ball more into the wall, yeah. or you can just keep it the same. But if you move even a little bit closer to the golf ball coming down and lose that space, you're in trouble. The other thing is that as that left leg opens up, it actually pulls your arms more out and in front. Yeah. Well, that's it the thing I noticed. shallow versus when that side kind of moves linear and there, arms pull down, right hip works out, elbow. So the club's a little steep, right yeah. arm's a little behind, and that's why you have to dump everything and kind yeah. of throw the club at it. That's one of the things I noticed with Julian. And when I do so, I was making some rehearsals, just really, like I can feel the club get, get there without even thinking. So it yeah, up. what it feels like to most people is the arms are gonna work way over the top, because that left side, opening up pulls the arms out, yeah. but it also causes the shaft to flatten. So it's kind of like the arms are out in front and the club is kind of behind. And so it's a weird feeling and that most people probably feel like they're gonna hit this big block, but it's because they're gonna keep rotating around it all squares but up. It's and almost like it's a few months ago, it's like that, that low draw yeah. feeling. Yeah, what I said is you have to give yourself permission to hit it right, even though it's not gonna go right. Like it's going to feel like it's gonna go right. So you have to kind of get it out of your head that that can be a negative. And then when you actually do it, it'll go like very small draw that'll fall left with short irons. And it'll generally probably be a tiny fade with driver. Because I'm just, right now, I guess all I'm thinking about is imagining that I have the band. Yep. I'm going to have a band I can put yeah. on. But. So like I said, is the transition is getting that left knee almost as far away from your right hip as possible. That's probably the easiest. As lower right away. Absolutely. Because the would... lack of shaffling comes from as soon as the left leg straightens, the left hip rises, the left shoulder rises, and that's a geometry problem. Yeah. If your left shoulder is going up and your left hip's going up, the only way you can reach the golf ball is to dump the club down. Like you have to make the club longer. See, like, that felt terrible, but the ball fight was awful. And you'll see, like, it's you're going to feel like you're doing it a lot. It's yeah. going to visually be a lot more but, yeah. subtle. When you see it side by oh, yeah. side, it's not subtle. Like it, But at full speed, it's a very subtle. But as soon as that knee gets in front of the hip, not only is the knee in front of the hip, the knee's pointed like 45 degrees in relation to the target line. So you have 60 degrees more range of motion before you have to start kind of standing up, yeah. which means you're going to be in the follow through before yeah. that happens. Yeah. So then what happens is before, when you're there, that club heads almost all the way down by your right foot. Now it's parallel to the yeah. ground. Because I can see I'm trying to tilt just a little bit like yeah. because of habit. But that left leg staying bent is the left leg, left hip doesn't climb quite as fast and the leg straightening kind of just past impact. So it could even be more. Yeah. But that's significantly better than there I just imagine honestly like a, a an exercise ball behind me. Yeah. Well and watch. Doing like sixty percent speed yeah. and try to do the left leg the most.
I mean, I love the feeling of it. Just yeah. like, like that's the first thing that happens. Well, what'll happen is you'll do some of those where you'll swear you're swinging 60% speed and the ball goes just, just as far. far. Yeah. But you'll see it's even more. Yeah. Like, like and it's three inches. Like it's not this massive, mm -hmm. but it feels huge because three inches down there is a big deal. That's what she said. <laughs> it works out. <laughs> Well, and it's almost like I noticed my foot, because I've always noticed my foot, I naturally kind of go in transition to my left toe and then heel, yep. whereas this is getting me right to my heel right and away. And you will get to the toe, but it'll Not be a quicker. Yeah. Like it'll be, yeah. everything's gonna happen sooner. Yeah. Like the problem is you did clear the left side. Yeah. Just after the right side worked out and after you kind of slid forward, like yeah. it's a, just it's that not that it went. never happened, it just happened In the wrong slow sequence. and late. And so, it's pretty easy if you use the divots on the ground. Yeah. See that starts working away from the target line early. Yeah. And it pulls the arms more out, and the shaft actually lays down sooner. Better. Yeah. It's right and on then the takes that, yep. And then right arm will be more bent, you'll be more bent over through it. And everything's just gonna get a little cleaner. Like I said, before it wasn't bad, but the problem is is so as long as you kind of committed to everything, it could have been pretty good. Yeah. But the problem is with the club overtaking a little quick and kind of being dumped under, if you slow down even a little bit or it was a little bit kind of lack of confidence or yeah. steering, well, if I was it like goes if my confidence was up or I'm not thinking, like when I'm filming it's just very by myself, it's very easy. I'm just kind of into it, but playing with Devin, playing with Julian, playing with the kids, like I have to think a little bit because I want to play well. It, it comes down to rhythm and conflict, like timing yeah. basically. Yeah, well, so like the difference is basically as you were coming down, so go up to the top, then come down, stop it right, hip high, you go up there. It's so like now you're here, mm -hmm. before I was there. here. Yeah. So that claw face is going to overtake and shut down a lot quicker than yeah. that one. So what's going to happen is if you slow down at all, that becomes there. And then that's where, especially with longer clubs or like a three wood, which yeah. has the propensity to turn over anyway. Or a flighted shot. Yeah. I did it on gonna three, go yes, two days ago where I had it like kind of punch a six iron and hit a high hook six iron in the bunker. And it's because most guys are trying to hit it. Like if you're trying to hit it low, it's two things is you don't have a ton of shaft length yeah. and couldn't because of the way the legs were working. So then you try to do it with the face. So you're going to shut it yeah. down to get the low. And then you're also slowing down. You're not hitting it. You have more yeah. club, not hitting it as yeah. hard. All of that's actually making it harder to hit it low without hitting it left. Yeah. Whereas when you do this correctly, that left leg rotates out of the way, you can actually stay way on top of it, have more shaft length, and you'll be able to hit it low and not have to take as like you'd be able to maybe take half a club more and hit it hard yeah but you won't have to take like two clubs extra back way off which just makes it easier to start the ball online yeah so it's it's not that the other way can't work it's just it's harder which is why it'll show up the good was still good but the bad was too bad too often And especially lately, it's been blowing like 20 miles an hour every single day. Either trying to take shortcuts or putting too much pressure on yourself and actually making it harder yeah. to perform at a high level. I'm gonna play that swing thought event. It's the 30th, 31st. As of the 14th, 15th, I'm not filming anything. Like it's just, let's, Got everything done, let it upload, but like let's prepare and play a lot of golf and practice and, and feel confident. But so if you were to look at these, and then from down the line is easy to see too. That felt good. And that just felt like the club face moved a lot less too. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that lesson. I hope you learned from it. 
If you did, subscribe, like the video, um, give it a big old thumbs up, share with a friend who needs some help with what their lower body is doing in the golf swing. And um, yeah, I guess I will see you in a couple weeks. Peace.